Christy, man, for Green Technologies. Good to see you, man. Hey, what do you hey. <laughs> Eating bananas, man. Breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Justin, tell us what you're doing here. Right? All right, what I'm, what I'm showing now is a, a product that we're making mostly for bike stores and hardcore enthusiasts that want to test battery packs. And the thought was that tons of people already have cycle analysts sticking around in their shop and their garage. So, we wanted to use the cycle analyst not just as an on display product, but actually as a control station for battery charging and discharge station. So, we're calling it Battery Grin Spectre. Uh, no logo on it yet, but we'll be CNC machining that soon enough. And on top of here is just a version 2 cycle analyst that we've got loaded on it, custom firmware. So, battery tester version 0.01, .01. so we're obviously far along in the process. Um, and so the idea here is that the, the, the cycle analyst, you can use it to monitor the discharge of a battery easily, but when you're characterizing batteries, you want to charge and discharge them several times, and ideally graph all that data and compare how many amp hours, how many watts you get at different current levels. And since the cycle analyst is already measuring voltages, amp hours, it has the functionality to do that and the ability to communicate to a computer, we thought we could use the, the output signal of a cycle analyst, which is normally controlling a motor controller, say if we're doing a low voltage cutoff or if we're setting a current limit, it can actually control whether the battery test station is in a charging or a discharging mode. So here we have it hooked up pretty simply with uh, with our input wires. So here we have a load resistor and then you'd plug in a battery charger on this side and at these two ends you connect to your battery pack. So if you have a battery with a separate charge port and a discharge port, plug this into the discharge port, that into the charge port. Um, and so now it's got an, it basically is a, an interceptor between the charging and the discharging of the battery pack. Alright, so awesome. plugged into a computer. And here's the software here, right? So here's our, our Grinspector software in its uh, first release state. So with the uh, the device, it detects here that there's a uh, uh, station number three. So if you look at this here, you can see that this is station ID three. So if I have three or four of these in my in my e-bike service shop, each one would get its own station number. So if I had another battery station, I could add a test station. It would automatically detect what's going on the ports and put the new station ID there. So you can monitor multiple batteries and have them in the independently going through the, the discharge cycle. Whoa. So what the software lets us do then is choose uh, exactly what our, our charging and discharging is going to do. So here we're going to charge the battery, say for say a LIGO battery would charge in two hours. You set low voltage cutoff, so when the, the discharge would stop, and then how many cycles we want to do. So you could use this software to do cycle testing, do hundreds and hundreds of testing and look at the life cycle uh, degradation of the cells. More often, we would do this in our shop. We QC test every single battery before we ship it to a customer, and we usually like to do at least two cycles on the battery and, uh, and just ascertain that it gives the, the stated amp hours. Um, it's also useful to do multiple cycles when you want to compare high and low current discharge behavior. Um, so this final voltage field is that, uh, so, um, so this is a low voltage cutoff for each test. At the, the testing is done, it charges the batteries, but instead of allowing it to charge all the way, you can set it to charge to a final end of charge voltage. And the rules for shipping lithium batteries have been updated recently that you're required to ship it at 30% state of charge. Huh. It used to be a guideline, they would recommend you ship the batteries within a, you know, not fully charged. Now they explicitly state you have to ship at 30%. So for a shop like ours, where we're shipping out a lot of batteries, we can run the discharge test and in this station will automatically stop the charging at that 30% point so that you can take it off the shelf and know it's in a ready to ship state for the customer side. <laughs> Alright, so uh, you never stop talking. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. So yeah, so we can give us, so in our batteries, you know, we, everyone has its own unique serial numbers. We can give some nominal parameters. And then uh, in this case, we're gonna discharge this LIGO battery. So I could hit run here and now we'll see the test station. Uh, it starts off by charging the battery before the first discharge. So in this case, we don't have a charger hooked up. So I'm going to skip the charging. Now it's going to switch over to discharging mode. So at discharging mode, you'll now see here it's showing 5 amps of discharge current, uh, the battery voltage, and if we zoom our battery graph here, so here's our discharge happening in real time. So this is the accumulated time. You can switch between having either a time axis or amp hours as your horizontal axis. And so now this is a current, 5 amps, the voltage. Um, and uh, if we look over on our test station, now you see the cycle analysis oh, showing, yeah. showing it's in discharge mode, showing how many watt hours, how many amp hours have uh, accumulated in this discharge. 
the battery was starting to be a bit warm. If you look at this battery, the LIGO has a state of charge indicator. Yeah. So this was letting us track to see how accurate our LED indications are. So the LIGO, it's not just showing the battery voltage, it's showing the IR compensated voltage. So even if I draw high current, it's not going to go to a lower voltage readout. It stays at this while it's at 80% charge. Once it's below 80%, it shows the fourth LED and the third. So at our hotel room last night, we were doing a discharge test and just comparing at what amp power point did the LED move down on the LIGO wow. to make sure that the IR is matching. Is matching there. And so, so say this test moves along. Um, so let's uh, so say it's finished its discharge, you skip it, and then it will switch over to charging mode. Um, what I want to show now is that once this whole thing's done, if you had a full graph here, you could click print graph and generate a PDF printout. And this will show us, if I had multiple discharges, you would see those discharge curves all on the uh, no superposed way. there. And if you did the discharge at different currents, it would tell you the DC internal resistance of the battery. So you'd actually get an internal resistance spec or characterization in your initial QC. <laughs> so what we've been doing now is printing this graph off and then including that as sort of a test report with all the batteries that we send out to our customers. Oh. Um, and we're hoping to make this into a, a readily affordable product so that all the other businesses in the e-bike scene can similarly QC their battery easily test, you know, uh, return world, batteries right? and have yeah. a service and then give a service report that just shows just what's going on. So yeah, this is the Battery Grin Specter. We, uh, we hope to be releasing uh, within a month or two and giving it out to dealers. A month or two, man. Because you know, we're using just light bulbs, we're using sacro and lace. Yeah, this thing is just... Oh. <laughs> 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 You too, man! <laughs> so I should say, well, another thing. So some of you might wonder why. Okay, okay, no. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah, we're, yeah. we're using resistors as our load. So it's possible another battery test is we'll have an internal uh, active load for controlling the discharge current. But the downside of that is it's really hard to test high voltage and high current setups because you're limited by how much power the transistors can dissipate. Um, so resistors are just super robust and simple. And it means that this test station, I could hook up, you know, a 52 volt battery into a 40 amp discharge just by connecting resistors. And I'm not worried about whether the electronic load can handle that kind of power level. So it's true for testing small batteries, small cells, low currents, you can do a tidy unit that doesn't have an external resistor. But when you're testing an e-bike battery pack where you want to discharge it at a thousand watts, it's really hard to dissipate a thousand watts electronically. And this here gives you the flexibility of doing that at very low cost. So the resistors cost almost nothing. You could hook up light bulbs if that's what you have at your yeah, shop yeah. right now. Uh, we're going to be offering these 6.8 ohm load resistors. It's a standard product. Um, at our own station in our shop, we have two Two resistors for every station and a little switch that connects them in series or in parallel or oh. isolated. So in series you get you know two and a half amps with a 36 volt pack. Running just one of these you get five amps and when you put them in parallel you get 10 amps. And then if you want to do a test of 20 amps we just connect two of our double pairs in parallel. So there's four resistors. Wow. And uh, that lets us do everything we need to do from a QC perspective and uh, validation perspective on battery packs. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, that's it, man. Oh, this thing can handle so much power, man. Power, yeah. The technologies. Ah, trusting. Oh, yeah. The Lego battery, man. This beauty here, man. You can travel an airplane with this thing. Oh, yeah.